Welcome to the Tracker Installation and Training Guide. Today, we're going to go over objects and trials. First thing we're going to do is go over creating an object. Then, we're going to manipulate that object. Then, record a trial. And finally, learn how to play back that trial. Now I'm going to go over how to create an object. I'm using an old passive one in this scene to make it easier on myself. The first thing you're going to want to do is press Alt and drag select the markers that are part of your object. Now the markers are selected, I can go ahead and create the object. Now in the Objects tab, there's a Properties section. If you go down to the Create Object and name your object, I'm going to name it Wand, you will see the Create button turn green. Now if I press Create, I have created the object. And that's creating an object. Now you might want to change some of the names and visual properties of the object. So if you go over to the Objects tab and press the arrow next to the wand, you can see it drops down some of the markers. I've already named some of these to make it a lot faster, but the one I'm going to name is the Origin Marker, the place where I'm going to snap the origin later. So clicking that and going down to the Name box, I'm just going to rename it Origin. There we go. Now, one of the next things you can do to make it more visually appealing is you can change the color. If you have multiple objects in the scene, this can be become very handy. So if I click the markers and then click the color, I can select whatever color I'd like. I'm going to select this red. And there we go. We've changed the color of the object. Also, if your object is very small and close together and it's hard to make out each point because the points are so close due to the radius being large, I can actually close down the radius and make them a little smaller. So this is quite handy with, like I said, small objects. Uh, and that's how you can manipulate the visuals of the object. Now that we've changed the visuals of the object, we want to actually manipulate the origin of it. Of it. First thing you want to do is pause the live stream. So I press the space bar, that'll pause it, and you can see it, say, paused in the upper part of the screen. Or, you can press the pause button in the uh, Objects tab. And now it's paused. I'm also going to zoom in, get a little closer, it makes it easier for me. And the idea of this is I want to grab the marker I want to snap the origin to. It makes it a lot easier than sort of arbitrarily putting the origin where you think the middle of the object is. So I'm going to Alt drag select the marker I'm concerned about, and then I'm going to grab and drag along the axes. So I'm going to grab the Y and pull on the Y, and it snaps towards that origin, and I pull on the X and it snaps to the point. Next, I'm going to grab the Z and just pull it up and down to make sure it's snapped into the center. Next, I'm actually going to rotate around that point and point the X down towards the handle of the wand. For this, what you want to do is go towards the rotate tool. This can be done, again, one of two ways. First, double click an axis. Now it's changed to the rotate tool, or I can press R on the keyboard. That changes the rotate tool. Respectively, if I press T, it's going to change to translate. Translate, rotate. There we go. Next, I want to grab the point I want to rotate my x-axis to. I'm going to Alt, drag, select, point at the base, and then grab the blue circle and rotate around the Z until my x snaps towards it. And there we go. I've now snapped the x-axis back towards that point. There is another way to manipulate the rotation of the object. What you want to do is go to the object and select it and then Show Advanced. It is currently showing already. You can see that I already have a rotation put on it, on what I did earlier with the rotation around the Z. I'm going to zero everything out. Now everything is zero. I'm going to rotate around the x-axis 180 degrees. That'll cause my Y to point down the uh, length of the wand, and then my uh, X will continue to point out to the right-hand side. So I go to the X selection, input 180, and now I have my Z down and my Y towards the back of the wand. 
I'm going to manually do another rotation just so it looks correct, and then grab the rotate around the Z. And now I have my axes perfectly aligned with my Z pointed down. This is very handy for people who want to use it with quad rotors. Next, you can also translate where the origin is located based on the global coordinate system. Again, if I go back to the wand, you can see global position. I'm actually going to drop this down by 40 millimeters. If I grab this and type in 9, I've eliminated 40 millimeters, and now I've dropped my object by 40 millimeters. Again, this is handy if you know the dimensions of your object and you want to make sure the origin is located right in the center. This is much easier than just grabbing and pulling on the axes, and much more accurate. Now, currently the object is being output in XYZ, but maybe you want to change that. If you go to the global rotation and click the angle, you can actually see that I can change this to any other format or configuration of the XYZ uh, coordinate system. Also, there is another way you can manipulate where the origin is located. It's a little more advanced and more difficult, so I'll only go over the idea of what you do. If I go to the, one of the markers, or all of the markers, you can see there's an XYZ, and you can see there is distances. What that is, is it's going to be the distance from the origin to that marker. So you can easily uh, manipulate these numbers if you know exactly how far the origin is going to be from your markers. Like I said, this is quite difficult because it requires you to manipulate multiple, uh, multiple locations at the same time. All you have to do is unlock and then edit away. You'll have to go through each one of them, X, Y, and Z, to get that orientation correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and save my object out to make sure that I can use it later. What you want to do is make your way to the Objects tab and right click on the wand and press Save Object. That's going to ask me where I want to save the wand object, either the shared or the private. I'm just going to put it in shared. Now you'll see a little icon that shows that it's been saved to the shared folder. And now we can go ahead and run trials and have this object show up and all. Now I'm going to go over how to create a trial and record some of your data. First thing you want to do is make sure you're back in the live view. I'm going to press spacebar and now I'm back in live. And then I'm going to go to the recording tab in the resources pane. Currently I'm saving it in the shared folder. Um, there's also a private folder which will be your, on your local user. I can also open the folder and view where that is actually saved. And then next I want to input a trial name. I'm going to name it trial1, and I'm going to auto-increment the trial number, so this should bump up to trial2 in the next take. I've also enabled permit override of existing files. If anything else name, is named trial1 in that file, it will overwrite that. Um, I'm going to uncheck that just to make sure. I don't want to overwrite anybody's data. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and start capturing a trial. So I'll ask my assistant, Catlin, to help out. <laughs> And she's going to grab the wand and move it around in a second. And go ahead. And so she's just sort of walking around the scene, holding around just to give an idea of what the record does. And now that she's done a rotation, she's going to put it back down. I'm going to let it run for a second and then press stop. That trial is automatically saved out to that shared uh, file location. Uh, you don't have to save that yourself and that is recording a trial. Now that we've captured a trial, I'm going to go through some of the more advanced parameters that we can set up for recording. If I open up Show Parameters, you can see there's a Start Stop on Remote Trigger. What that is, is a uh, it's going to start stop based on a high to low pulse um, into either the GigaNet or the Lock. It will not work with the PoE as there is no way to input one of those triggers into the uh, PoE. Next, you see Capture Before Start. What that's going to do is it's going to continuously buffer information um, in the uh, memory. And once you hit Start, it's going to take all that information and add it to the recording. And then, so you'll have five seconds past when you started, or two seconds past when you started. Um, it's all up to you what you would like. 
Next is stop after duration. You can set up automatic stopping points. So if you only want to do 10 second trials, um, you can stop it after 10 seconds and then all you have to do is press start and it'll automatically stop. Finally, there is broadcast start and stop. And that's going to broadcast uh, a UDP packet that you can easily attach to other systems that can take out in that information. So I'm going to do a stop after duration of five seconds and I'm going to arm it. Um, so now it's waiting for either a signal or for me to press start. Now if I press start, it's armed and it's going. And you can see that after it hits five seconds, it's automatically stopped and saved the trial. Now we're going to go ahead and load up the trial. I press load trial. It's going to bring up a folder to show where the trials are. And I'm going to select trial one. Press open now the trial has loaded into the scene. You'll notice that the object hasn't been attached to the marker cloud. What you want to do is go to objects and just turn it on. And then all you have to do is press play. Now the object has snapped to the marker cloud and is outputting data. It's a good thing to know that the data you're viewing right now will be output into the SDK for future use. And that is how you load up a trial.